Well, a good night here at Toronto. Um, went up to a, a local Italian restaurant and had a, a nice Italian meal for dinner. I lashed out a bit. But uh, I've just fired the motors up and um, we're heading back to Rathmines this morning because I've got uh, a parcel coming, uh, the electric outboard. I hope it's coming today anyway. So I'm going to Rathmines and uh, we'll get that on the dinghy. A bit exciting. The lake is very dirty from uh, all the rain we've had. So where it was quite clean water, it's pretty brown looking now. Well, we don't wear skimpy bikinis. Hell, it frightens me when I take my shirt off. There's definitely no one pregnant here. This is motor sailing for old dudes. We do live on a boat and we do cruise extensively along the Australian coast. Join us and visit some great destinations. Learn how to look after a boat and live off grid. It might even get you enthused to do the same thing. Hey, stay out there till you can't. Well, it's a bit exciting uh, going around at Rathmines and picking up this new outboard. Um, probably be a little bit to learn and a bit to adapt maybe, but uh, I think it should be all right. One of the reasons I'm going for the electric outboard is uh, we've had really overcast weather like this for the last three or four days, and my house batteries are still at 90% this morning. So they only get down to 90%. If we get a bit of sun, they'll be pushed up to about 100% by this afternoon. If we get a really sunny day, they'd be pushed up to 100% by probably 10 or 11 o'clock. So I've got an abundance of um, solar power going into my house bank now, and I've got plenty of uh, house power. So by having an electric motor, I'm going to use a bit of that um, to run the outboard. And pretty easy to charge up. and. I guess, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing because I haven't tried it out, but I think it's going to be all right. I think it'll uh, push the little dinghy around pretty well. So we'll get round to Rathmines, uh, tie up at the jetty there. I've got to get the old outboard off the boat. I'll probably uh, run some fresh water through it and spray it up a bit before I take it off. And then um, we'll wait for the del delivery of the new one and uh, we'll get it on and uh, have a look how it all works. Well, it's all happening a bit quickly. Uh, I made a bit of a decision just the other day. Uh, I've been researching it a bit and I'm going to go for an electric outboard. Uh, the lithium is working fantastically on this boat. I've got, um, I'm nearly at 100% by 12 o'clock most days. Probably not today, it's a bit overcast, but um, most days the batteries are up to 100%. And I've got the panels putting out all this power and I figure I can use it. So I'm going to go with an electric outboard. Um, I've ordered one this morning and uh, it'll be on its way. So I've got to uh, get rid of the, uh, the Honda that's been a good outboard. But the thing with it is that um, with the petrol outboard, you've got to carry fuel around. In I've got two of these jerry cans in the dinghy. Um, I've got to carry a spare one just in case I do run out. Uh, I've got 20 litres of uh, fuel in a compartment in the tiller flat that I keep for filling these up. Um, it just makes sense to have an electric motor. So when I get it, I'll um, give you a rundown of how it all works. It's going to be lighter. This is uh, 27 kilos and there's probably about 5 kilos uh, 10 kilos worth of fuel on the boat as well. Um, the electric one is 17 kilos all up. So it's going to make it a lot lighter and it's going to be a lot easier to use. One of the main reasons I'm doing it, Wendy really has trouble, even though I got this Honda which has got uh, a very good starting mechanism on it. It's um, got a cam on uh, a lobe on the cam that uh, allows you to start it without any compression. Uh, 
it. So it is quite easy to start, but Wendy still struggles with it. Um, she's uh, had a few back problems and she just can't lean over the back and start it. So with the electric one, you virtually push a button to turn it on, twist the throttle one way or the other for forward or reverse. So I think it's going to be a great, um, a great thing to upgrade to on the boat. Okay, the first thing I've got to do is uh, get this plug out of the outboard. The trick is to take it out very carefully so you don't drop it. Always a bit tongue in cheek that. And then we put uh, the flusher in so that just screws into the outboard. We'll attach the hose on there and we can start it and run fresh water through the cooling system. That'll get all the salt out of the galleries and uh, preserve it a bit. What I'll do when I get the water on, I'll run that until it runs out of fuel. And that drains the carby bowl out. If you do that, um, you don't end up with a buildup of um, lacquer in your carby, so you won't have blockages. These fuel containers can come out now. Two. All of those are now going to be not required. So there's five kilos there, 10 kilos with the two of them, and uh, 27 kilos with the outboard. So it's going to be a lot lighter setup uh, with the electric one. Put the water on there, and we'll just give it a start. Notice a lot of oil in the water here too, and this is a four stroke, so you won't get that with an electric motor, I'm very happy about. What I'm doing now, I'm just running it, the fuel's not onto the motor, so I'm just going to run it till it uh, runs out of fuel. Now this is going to be the hardest part of the whole operation, is getting this outboard off and up onto the boat. Well, I'm glad that's off. That was uh, quite a chore. So this is one of the problems you have when you live on a boat and you don't have a, a fixed address. I'm getting uh, this outboard motor delivered and I had it sent care of the Rathmines post office, but apparently uh, TNT don't deliver to the post office. So it went back to the depot. I organized with David at the Lake Macquarie Convention and Conference Center uh, to use his address to have the parcel dropped off. It's pretty close to uh, F Jetty, so just a short walk I'll be able to carry the motor down there. Actually, David's actually lent me a trolley, which is fantastic. So um, one of the things you have to deal with if you don't have uh, an address where you can have stuff delivered. But anyway, we've got to just wait around now for the outboard to arrive. Thanks very much, David. If you're looking for somewhere to do a conference um, or a convention, uh, think about the Lake Macquarie um, Catalina Convention Centre. It's right near the lake and fantastic in the bushland here. It's a great venue. So thanks again, David. Uh, much appreciated. I'm glad David lent me the trolley because it uh, certainly makes the job a lot easier.
Well, the outboard has arrived. First thing I've noticed is uh, it's a fair bit lighter than the old outboard, that's for sure. Two parcels, one is the outboard and one is the battery. Well, it's pretty well packed, all in styrene and uh, ready to go. We've got um, instruction manual and some uh, toggles, keys virtually. I'll have a look at the instructions first. Now uh, we've got a battery charger. This is a fast charger so this charger apparently will charge the battery in about uh, three hours. So it's a pretty good looking unit. I've got, a, I've got a spot for that that'll work pretty well. Well the first thing I'm going to do is charge the battery so I've just set up the uh, fast charger. Okay so the blue light comes on says it's charging. The fan's running on that thing and there's a little light on here that says the battery's charging. So I'll give that a charge. I'd say that usually lithium-ion batteries, they let them rest at about 60%, so probably not dead empty, but uh, we'll bulk that up and see what it takes out of our house. <laughs> Definitely a lot lighter than taking the other airborne off, that's for sure. go around there and help lock the whole thing on. Well the battery's not uh, completely charged up but uh, I can't wait to give it a little go. So getting it on I think is the first thing. We've got to do is line up those two things there, drop it in position, and that's locked on. Your power cable, it's got a key at the bottom. I think that's on. Beautiful. Okay, it's put a bit of weight in the back of the dinghy, but uh, I think I'll still have to trim up my bridle a bit. Let's get it in the water and see how it operates, eh? It is a lot lighter than the other. It's a lot lighter than the other. So I'll have to adjust that. Uh, I'll have to adjust that um, bridle for sure. Okay. Right, our battery switch is on. It's power. Hold it down for two seconds, I think. Okay, we're at uh, nine point five nine hours, so looking pretty good. Okay, so there's the outboard fitted. You've got to have your magnetic key in place. You press the power button for two seconds. Beeps to let you know it's on. And just by turning the handle, we're off. This little dinghy's a little bit tender, but So it drives this little dinghy through the water pretty well. 
I suppose I could sit here and use it. That's at about half power and it's giving us a pretty good clip actually. No noise whatsoever, it's unbelievable really. You can't hear a thing. It's not, not giving out, the only noise you can hear is the water coming out the back of the boat. When do you like it? Very easy to use. I think I'm gonna to have to put a tiller extension on that. Quite responsive too when you come off the throttle. Pretty responsive and then to go into reverse all you do is turn the throttle the other way. So just with a little bit of throttle it's uh, quite a bit of thrust. Very maneuverable, very easy to maneuver. I do need a tiller extension, I think. The other thing I'm going to have to do is adjust this bridle because with the weight being a lot lighter, this is too far back now, that this point here has to come further forward. And I've got some Dyneema that I'm going to do that with. Uh, it'll make it pretty adjustable, get away from this um, steel cable. Well, how quiet's this? All I can hear is the water going past the boat. Fantastic. Going to give it a little run. I've had to uh, change the bridle a bit, suit the weight. We've got all that done now, so I'm just taking it for a little run and see how much uh, she uses. I think I'm only running on about half power, and I reckon we're doing probably three or four knots, I'd say. Getting along all right. I have had to pull it, put a tiller extension on for my setup in the boat here, and uh, I've put the old Honda cover back on just to protect everything a bit. The other thing I think that you really need to do uh, in this situation is put a cover over that uh, little screen. I hate those screens being out in the sun, and what I've got now, until I get something better, I've just got a sock that goes over it, so um, that sock slips up over the top and that'll protect the screen from being sun damaged because they hate being out in the sun, those little uh, LED screens. Okay, so that's at about a uh, bit under um, three-quarter charge now. So what I'm going to do is now charge the uh, battery up and we'll see how long that takes with the fast charger. So we started at 97.2% uh, in the house batteries. Now I have the option uh, for charging the battery of actually taking the battery off the motor. It unclips pretty simply actually and you can lift it off but I think a better setup for me is I've just set up a plug in this locker here and um, I can plug the charger into that plug, it runs to my 240 volts so it's through the inverter onto the batteries and then I can just plug the uh, charger straight onto the, the outboard with it on the boat and it just makes uh, Makes it a little bit easier, I think. So that just plugs into a 240 volt plug I've installed in here. Keeps it pretty waterproof. The charger sits neatly on the transom of the uh, of the dinghy.
for charging. So after an hour and a half on the charger, you can see my house bank is nearly up to 100%. So uh, I think the charger only draws 7 amps and it ran for an hour and a half. So with a bit of sun out, there's really no discernible um, problem in charging that uh, outboard battery. It's now fully charged. This has been the latest edition. Uh, for $15 I bought a child's um, steamer wetsuit from the op shop and I've turned it into an uh, outboard cover. So uh, that covers, it stops the plastic from degrading in the sun. It covers the screen up. I think that's important. The screen on the uh, tiller arm uh, is an LCD screen and they hate being out in the sun. So it's covered that up and I think it'll just protect it a bit for long term. Well look, I've had the uh, electric outboard on the dinghy for a couple of weeks now and we've given it a pretty good test. Since I put it on, Wendy's come back on the boat and Ted's come back with her. So that means that uh, every day uh, I have to take Ted ashore at least twice a day and we're probably taking the dinghy ashore two or three times a day, probably even a little bit more. Um, using it like that, you probably get a good week before you'd have to charge it. And we're getting pretty good run time. I think the, uh, the amount of um, range you get out of a fully charged battery is pretty good. And I'm not running it at full revs all the time. That would certainly cut it down quite a bit. I guess one downside is I don't think the dinghy's quite as fast uh, with this outboard, but it is a lot less powerful than six horsepower. It's only, uh, it's only uh, one kilowatt, so um, not as much power there, but it still gets you through the water pretty well. Um, I like the fact that it's light. The, the whole setup on the back of the boat is lighter. Um, I'm not having to carry fuel. I'm not having to go and source fuel. I can just plug the charger in and charge it up. Uh, very manoeuvrable. Um, the thing about an electric motor at very low revs, you're still getting full thrust. So the torque at very low revs is great and it makes it really easy to manoeuvre into the back of the boat or up against a jetty or something like that. So I, I love that aspect of it as well. And I really am pretty well, pretty taken with um, how this little outboard works. So we're going to stick with it and um, yeah, as long as uh, it lasts a long while, which I think it should, um, it's going to be a great thing. It's going to be a, a real plus for the boat. So thumbs up um, for e-outboards. I reckon they're great. Maybe not for everyone, but um, good for what I'm doing on this boat. Mm -hmm.